Hi everybody, welcome back. This will be part two in our uh, Maya to Unreal environment setup. I was showing a couple different ways that we can import in models from Unreal as an environment into the engine. Uh, last video we discussed the overall project setup and then how to export our scene or our individual objects from Maya uh, properly. So what we have now are our FBX files and then our texture map files. We need to have those ready to import before we start doing anything in Unreal. Okay, so if you've never used Unreal before, uh, this video, second part, will discuss how to create a project and then the navigation for Unreal. Um, so uh, let me just close this project out. Um, let's see, yes, yeah, save, that's, uh, that's not save, that's fine. Um, okay. So um, we need to have our FBXs and our texture maps ready. Uh, if you need to download uh, Unreal's Epic Games Launcher, or Epic's uh, Launcher, uh, you can go to Epic Games' website and download the launcher, and then we install the proper version or the specific version that we want from the Epic Games Launcher. Um, Unreal is free. All you have to do is, once you download the launcher, uh, create, looks it's telling me I want to download some games, I guess. It's telling me, uh, uh, or after you download the launcher, you can create a free Epic Games account. Uh, when you download the engine, you have to be logged in with your account in the launcher for it to download the engine. Um, so open up the launcher, sign in with your, your name um, or your account, and then if you go to library, uh, you would hit the plus symbol and find whatever version you might want. Uh, so I'm using 4.24.1, uh, so that's the version that we're going to use. It'll also show you any previous versions that you have downloaded or installed. Um, so once you go to library, hit the plus symbol <coughs> uh, and uh, install that. That will take a while for it to install, so let it run. Unreal requires a pretty good quality graphics card and processor, so not every computer potentially could run Unreal. Uh, so look at the requirements, uh, PC or Mac requirements for it to run, uh, and uh, pending your computer can run it, then you can uh, download and install Unreal. So uh, the Unreal Epic Games Launcher also has a lot of good information. There's a learn uh, drop down that has a lot of tutorials of what and how to get started with Unreal. This is a good starting point. Uh, so there's the first one, getting, get started with the Unreal Engine 4. Uh, level designer, quick start, artist, quick start. So what for this project would be good to start with is look at the get started one and then also look at the artist quick start. That's kind of what we are using it for with this project. It's from an artist standpoint. We're not going to make anything interactive or anything. There's also the marketplace. The marketplace has a lot of free content and also paid content. So it has some good starter projects. If you go to free, well, let's just click free. Uh, it has a lot of free content, user created and created by Epic Games that could help get you started as well. Uh, but um, look through the Epic Games Launcher. This is how we can download and install Unreal and then open up Unreal. So once you have installed Unreal, uh, there's a launch button at the top right. So make sure you're on the right version. Uh, 4.24.1 is what we're gonna use. So when I click on uh, launch, it's gonna open up the Unreal Engine. So this could take a little while, uh, especially if you're opening it for the first time. Uh, so we'll let it run and I'll talk about some of the basic things we'll do. We need to set up a new project and Unreal uh, starts with blank projects or there are a lot of templates that we can start with. So there's like a first person template, third person template, there's architectural viz templates, um, there's a vehicle template. Uh, so what is nice is you can see from the launcher I have some previous projects in here. You can also just open or click on one of these projects to open with uh, the version of the engine that it was created with. Um, so we don't have to launch, we can open a project if you already have a project created. But we haven't started a project yet, so we'll let the engine uh, see if it's running. No, it doesn't look like it. It's trying to, I guess. Uh, don't spam click this either. There it goes, it's going to start running now. There it goes, so it shows you Unreal Editor is running. Don't spam click it because the more iterations of Unreal that's open, the slower it's going to run. Um, so just let it uh, load. Um, you can see it on my um, hot air balloon background. Uh, initializing so it'll start to run the engine. 
but Unreal has default templates that can make your life as an artist easier or even designer easier. So you don't have to go mainly create a playable character or a camera. Some of these templates will already have this set up for you. So from the previous video, I opened up a third person template uh, and that's completely fine for this point of view. You can also open up the first person template if you want to. Um, but what we'll do is uh, choose a template. Uh, the basic commands of moving around while with the player are already set up there, so you don't have to do any of that. And then that makes it easier for us from an artist or designer standpoint to go ahead and get our models into Unreal. So we'll let this finish loading. It's pretty close to it. And then we'll talk about how to create a project because it is kind of a step process of knowing what to click uh, to get started with the right template and base project set up. The other thing to note with Unreal is that projects are pretty large. Uh, they can be a minimum of four or 500 megabytes to multiple gigs, depending on what is in your project. Um, so you're gonna need you know, four or five gigs worth of space uh, if you're creating more complex Unreal projects. So if you've created a project before, then you can open it up from the top section. Uh, if you haven't created a project before, then we're gonna go to new project categories uh, and we have different basic categories, games, film, television, live events, architecture, automotive. We're going to do games since that's our focus here. So from the new project categories, click on games and then we're going to choose next. Uh, this is the template choice uh, window. So what we're going to do is you can start blank, but we don't have playable controllers or things like that in the blank one. It's, you can create everything from scratch there. So instead, you can choose either first person or third person. So I'm just going to choose third person uh, for this setup. There's a lot of other options, but we're going to choose third person for right now. So we'll do next. And then from this window, we're telling what to use and how the project is going to be set up. We're going to do blueprints. Uh, Unreal also runs on C++, so we can do manual C++ project or blueprint. If you choose a blueprint, you can actually do C++ hard coding and blueprints at the same time. Um, and blueprints are really good for artists and designers that do not want to have to do all of the coding manually. So blueprint, I'm not going to change anything here. Uh, maximum quality, ray tracing is off, uh, display is to desktop console, and for this example I do not want to import starter content. Starter content will import some base uh, materials and objects which will increase your project size. So we're going to throw this to the desktop and I will say mod props, say unreal project. Well, can't be longer. So mod props, Unreal Proj. Okay. All right. So the only thing I'm not checking is no starter content here. We did games, uh, third person template, and then no starter content. The rest is as what it shows here. Create project. That's going to take a, a minute or two for it to create that as well. So let it just run. So what is it doing? Going to do is create all of our subfolders necessary for Unreal to run this project. Um, so as it does that, it will open up this template file and discover any assets that are manually loaded with this file. So the main idea is don't spam click, just wait for it to load. Let's see, I'm going to go show you the project folder while that's loading. So from the desktop, call it mod props, Unreal Project. So here's what the project folder looks like. Here's the project file. So if you close this out after working on this, you would double click on this to open it up directly in Unreal. That way you don't have to open up the launcher every time. You can just find your Unreal U project file and open that up. Uh, there's a bunch of other folders. The one that's really gonna matter for us is the content folder. Uh, and it's gonna go ahead and create the mannequin and third person template because we started with a third person template. Uh, and this is where we're going to create new folders and pull in all of our content that we'll use in Unreal. So the rest of them, the idea is that don't mess with folders, don't delete files, don't move files around because a lot of the things are in the proper folder. So that way Unreal will run properly. All right, so in Unreal, uh, the UI uh, will come up and the viewport will show us our third person template. We have the mannequin playable character, we have some opticals, some environment, and a couple other visual nodes that we'll get to. So the last part of this video, we'll discuss the main UI and navigation within Unreal. 
Uh, it's very icon centric, so we do have a couple of main drop downs file, edit, window, and help. If you're new, the help window is going to be really good uh, for you to start working with Unreal. So go to tutorials, uh, go to some of the help documents, the Wikipedia page, Answer Hub. Um, YouTube is also a really good resource as well. Epic Games has a YouTube channel. Window is a lot of our individual windows that we'll use. We'll find them elsewhere as we need them as well. Edit's very similar to what we've done before, but this is also where our project settings and our editor preferences are. We're not gonna need to make adjustments to them for what we're doing with this project, but that's where they are. And then file, one thing that's gonna be important is that we save all. We can save an individual asset, but we're also gonna to want to periodically save all. Uh, auto save is turned on as well as default. Uh, but we're going to do save all as well. Uh, underneath that is our mode. So this is our create panel where we create any kind of major objects. We have other tabs as well. Uh, paint, landscape, foliage, geometry. Uh, the viewport's to the right and we have some major buttons. Save current. Uh, we have some of those that we'll talk about today is build and play. Uh, we have other ones that are helpful for other interactions and things like that. Uh, but one thing that's going to be important is to build in the lighting. Uh, as we add new objects, we need to build the lighting if we're using static lighting. And then to play our level, we're going to hit the play button. We'll come back to that here in a second. To the right is our world outliner. This is very similar to Maya's outliner. So if I go back to Maya, here's Maya's outliner on the left in Unreal. The world outliner shows me all of my objects that are in my level. So that's in world objects. Underneath that's my details panel, and I also have my world settings panel opened up as well. Um, that might not be visible as default, but my details panel tells me all of my attributes and, and options that this particular object has. So if it's this staircase, here's every attribute that this staircase has. That's going to be important for us in a little while. Underneath that is our content browser. This is anything that our project has. If something is in the content browser, that doesn't necessarily mean we have it in our world. So world outliner is anything that we physically dragged into our viewport world. Content browser is anything in our folder setup of our project. I'm gonna click this button right here which is show or hide the source panel. Um, you can look at it from a visual icon based standpoint or I also like to have my folder set up as well. So here's that content folder that I mentioned earlier. As default with the third person point of view, we have geometry, uh, mannequin, third person, and third person BP, which is a blueprint. So these are the default folders uh, that allow this third person template to run. So don't mess with these, don't delete anything, so I'm moving these folders around. What we're going to do is create new folders. Okay. All right, uh, so you can move the camera around uh, in a similar way as what you would do in Maya. Uh, there's a lot of different ways we can move around in 3D. So if you hold down Alt and middle mouse click, that's like a pan. Okay. If you hold down Alt and left click, that is like an orbit, rotate around. And then Alt and right click is a zoom, it's a smooth zoom. Okay. So that is similar to the way Maya runs. So first way to navigate around in Unreal is to use the Alt and left, middle, or right click. So those are similar ways to what we've used in Maya. You can also select an object and hit F. That frames that object, so that way when I orbit around with Alt and left click, it orbits around this object now. So that is uh, another way we can uh, make adjustments that are similar to Maya. F frames to selected. Okay. Uh, the other similarity to Maya is if I hit W, that's the move tool. Uh, that's the arrows on the manipulator, so I can move this object around. If I hit E, that's the rotate tool. Okay, I'm hitting Control Z to undo. And then R is scale, so I can scale as well. All right, so W, E, and R are the same commands from Maya to be able to move between the move, rotate, and scale tools. There are also Unreal specific ways to navigate around the 3D viewport. Um, and that is just using the mouse buttons. So I'm not holding down Alt or anything. Uh, if I just hold the right mouse button, that's like a look around. It's not really orbit. It's, the, it's like if it's the body would be standing still and my head is pivoting around on my neck or torso. Um, so it's a look around command that's holding down right click by itself. Um, left click is like a walk around. So if I left click and drag forward, backward, left and right, that's like a walk around command. 
Uh, the scroll wheel is a snap zoom, just like many 3D software has. And then left and right click is a pan. So that's holding left and right click. Okay. So those are unreal specific navigational commands. That way you don't have to hold any alt key or other button. Uh, the other way to switch between the move, rotate, and scale tool is to hit the space bar. So the space bar goes between move, hit space bar again, it goes to rotate, hit space bar again, it goes to scale. Um, so that is an unreal specific way to switch between move, rotate, and scale as well. We'll come back and talk about some other ways to uh, manipulate the commands. But that's an overview of Unreal's UI and basically how to navigate around the viewport. Next video, we'll talk about how to import objects into Unreal and then start the material process and then making sure our lighting is set up properly.